Uh, my co-host today is the esteemed attorney, Peter Myerson of the law firm Cohn, Rasnick, Myerson, and Plout. It's great to be here, Jeff. Thank you very much for having me on. And uh, our guest uh, this evening is Mark Epstein, Epstein, <laughs> and um, uh, of uh, Milk Street Cafe. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's a great pleasure. Mark, uh, you know... Uh, Milk Street Cafe, as far as I'm concerned, it's a Boston institution. So why don't you tell us about how you got into the business, why you got into the business, and mm -hmm. what the Milk, Milk Street, is all, Street is all about. Okay. So uh, Milk Street, I started back in uh, 1981. I graduated from Brandeis. I grew up in Worcester. And uh, the idea was, could you make a cafe where you made everything from scratch? And uh, so we had real bakers and real chefs making real food, and, uh, and that really caught on, and that became very, very uh, busy right from the beginning. Um, during the 80s, the lines were out the door, um, but towards the end of the 80s, we actually found that we got a lot more competition in downtown Boston. There were many chains that came in that had not been there before, and we had to figure out what to do because these chains were affecting our retail sales. So what we actually did is we, we changed a little bit and we went into the corporate catering business because the corporate catering business, and what's different of that from the cafe is you have to deliver the food with all the paper goods and be there on time and make sure there's plenty of food. And that business, we found the chains could not compete with us because they did not have the skilled staff to do it. So we kind of morphed from a cafe that decided to go into the corporate catering business to the point that now corporate catering is 90% of our business and the cafe is the 10% flagship of the business. But the main business is corporate catering. Do you do the baking in the store or do you have other facilities? So we have just about the entire basement of the, we have 2,500 square feet as our cafe and we have about 10,000 square feet in the basement. It's quite and a commissary. We, wow, yeah, it you're really prepared. Is. Yeah, and we have uh, our, right in the parking garage in the building we have 10 vans. So we're, we're very much entrenched at 50 Milk Street, but we're, we're going just about 24 hours a day, five days a week now, from Sunday afternoon to Friday afternoon. I know that you opened another facility on, the, on that parking garage at one okay. point in time. Have you ever thought about having multiple locations, or is the corporate catering just so attractive a business that you're going to stay with that? First, it's a great question, and I've, uh, over 33 years, gone back and forth <laughs> uh, to the point that we even not only opened, as you said correctly, in the park at Post Office Square. We were there for 17 years, from 1991 to 2007. Uh, we loved being there. We loved, we considered that a real feather in our cap, um, but it was not an economically viable location. It was great for our image in the city, but it was not a money-making uh, part of our business, and I'm happy that we're now limited to just the one cafe uh, and the corporate catering, so we don't, uh, it's very difficult in the retail business, and honestly, that's not our expertise. Do you have a lot of uh, clashes with, let's say, Panera for competition? So no, the, the great part of our business is that um, chains are limited to what they can do. They can do a two or three page menu. We have a 16 page menu. So it's a different market. Panera, and I just, as far as it goes, I would say all of the competitors in the market, uh, number one, have a friendly competition to each other. It's, it's very rare that there's a bidding war for somebody's business. Well, we, we well never get involved. What 